Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. And welcome to the Manager Analysis Show, where we are going to be analysing a potential new manager for Everton. Of course, this is coming right after Carlo Ancelotti has left Everton earlier this week. And I'm joined by Dave Atopardi from Talking Wolves to discuss the former Wolves manager, uh, Nuno Espirito Santo, who was one of the prime candidates to replace Ancelotti at Everton. Uh, Dave, how are you doing, mate? I'm very well, mate. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me on the channel. Uh, of course, mate. Great to have you on. Uh, we'll get straight into it anyway. First of all, of course, Nuno left Wolves after four years of four full seasons, I think it was, wasn't it? One in the yeah, Championship yeah. and then three in the Premier League. Um, in that time, obviously, he's turned the fortunes around in that respect. I know it wasn't the best season, final one, but it's generally been an upward curve. Of course, he leaves a, le- a bit of a legacy there at Wolves. What are your thoughts on Nuno leaving Wolves? Well, it's a strange one, really. It was a little bit of a, a surprise for me personally, but you know, he, he came to the club. I think a lot of people um, in England weren't 100% too sure who he was at the time when he, he first got appointed. Uh, he'd been in charge of Rio Ave over in Portugal, uh, done well there, managed in Val- at Valencia, and then finally val- uh, managed in Porto, where you know he, his record wasn't actually too bad at Porto. Um, I think, unfortunately, it's just one of those leagues. If you don't win the league, you're going to probably lose your job. And that's what happened to him. And then, of course, for a championship side to appoint him, you know, for a championship side to appoint a manager that was managing in the Champions League the year before is quite rare. So we were able to do that. The board really backed him that first season in the championship, bringing in Ruben Neves, Diego Jota, Willy Bolly. And then the year after, you know, obviously smashed the championship. The year after in the Premier League, they're back to him again with Matinho, Patricio and so on. So the first couple of years, he had really good backing. If I'm honest, the recruitment the last two years has been really poor. Uh, I don't think we've improved much as a, as a squad and a team overall. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think Nuno, it's an interesting one. There's a lot of people saying it was almost the right time for him to leave Wolves because we've still got all the good memories, but it had started going downhill. There was a massive proportion of our fan base, which were Nuno out. There was a big split this year, probably from about January. Yeah, yeah. From from January, it was Nuno in, Nuno out. Especially on the the guys, you know, I'd probably say the younger generation were a lot more Nuno out. But I think, unfortunately for him, he'd set himself such high standards of winning the championship, finishing seventh the year after in the Premier League and qualifying for Europe, and then finishing seventh again. This season was the first time where he, he... it started to get a little bit more negative, not just results like performances on the pitch weren't great either. So I think almost it felt for, for both parties, it was the right time they both moved on. And I think, I think Wolves were probably cautious that if they did back in this summer and they started poorly again next season, all those good memories would have quickly disappeared and it could have turned quite toxic at the start of the next season, especially with all the fans back at Molyneux. So uh, with that in mind, you know, you mentioned his tactics a little bit can be a bit negative at times. Do you think he'd be a good fit for Everton? It's an interesting one because, you know, uh, for probably, uh, well, let's probably say 80, 85% of the time he, he managed the club, uh, it was always a three or five at the back system. So in the championship, it was predominantly a three, uh, a five, two, three or a three, four, three, really, really attacking, I would say. And um, it was interesting because a lot of the teams we played in the championship sat really deep. Um, and I went into every game that season com- uh, confident because there were teams like, I think, Leeds and Brentford it, it, that season that when they they played football and tried to attack us, we absolutely smashed them. Like, we found those games easier. The teams that wanted to play football against us, we found those games easier. We just absolutely smashed them. We were a lot more cautious the next year, still playing the same system, um, a 5 2 three, three, four, three, or even switching to a, a 5 a five three two. When there was a little, I think it was around November, we had a little bit of a dry patch and Nuno changed it up and we, we did really well going quite narrow and using the wing backs a lot more for width. Um, and then towards the end of last season, especially after Project Restart, again, the five at the back system just started to go a little bit stale. Unfortunately, we lost out in the Europa League. And I think Nuno just said, next season, I want to take a completely different approach. And we didn't really see it. It was strange. The first month of this season just gone, we didn't really see much. And then all of a sudden, he switched to a four at the back system. I think it was a game against Southampton, which we'd never seen before. Um, going forward, it was phenomenal. Really good attacking. Looked much better getting forward in numbers. But the players that he brought 
were just not suited to a four at the back system. So defensively, we were quite open. So I, I would be intrigued if he gets the Everton job to see, is he going to sit with his five or three at the back ways? Or if he is going to push this four at the back mentality that we've seen in little pockets of this season just gone. Yeah, I think if it is a three at the back formation, I, th- I don't think that'll go down particularly well with Everton fans, myself in particular. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it was one of those. It's an interesting one. And of course, there's there's many other factors to consider. What was his relationship like with the players at Wolves? Um, pretty good. It was... Um... He always wanted a small squad, very small squad. Um, you could see, especially in the first Premier League season, the amount of players we used, I think, was probably the lowest in the league. It was something like 21 or 22 players, which is, you know, really small. That's only two or three players outside your, your standard 18-man squad. But for the first three seasons, he was so lucky with injuries. Uh, in terms of his staff, he, his staff was bang on. Uh, the medical team had, like, brought in these like world-renowned techniques, you know, that the Premier League had never seen before. Um, so, you know, we, he got extremely lucky with that and had really small squads. Season just gone, it was a bit of a disaster in terms of injuries. Jimenez getting that major one, which is was sort of out of their control. That's bad but then, luck, really. Yeah, exactly. But then they've had ones like Neto, which they should have probably managed better, Willy Bolly, Daniel Budent. So a big chunk of our better players. But in terms of actually managing the relationships, it's been fairly good but it, it has been reported and it's known that he does have his favourites uh, so the players like Patrick Catrone obviously came to the club pretty highly rated spent quite a bit of money on him and just straight away you could tell he wasn't he wasn't Nuno's um, biggest fan so um he was shipped out very, very quickly. A player that we'd spent just under £20 million on was gone by January, by, you know, three or four months into the season. So he does have his favourites. I think once he's got an 11 in mind, he'll try his best to stick with that 11 as much as he can, unless there's suspensions and injuries. So I think, you know, it'll, it'll be it'll be intriguing. But this small squad has come back to bite him this year. So I think that's something that he'll definitely be cautious of uh, at whichever club he moves to next. Oh, man, you, you mentioned he has a good medical team who looked after the injury side of things really well. Uh, is, and is, were they his staff that sort of employed those techniques or were they just people who he headhunted? No, uh, it was his own staff. So, it, it's, it's again, this is going to be one of the interesting ones. So, when... Um, when Foson first came in, obviously we had uh, Walter Zenger who came and then Paul Lambert came in and they obviously both lost their jobs. And then that summer, I think they just wanted a whole new regime because the club was quite stale. So they got rid of loads of staff and members of staff that were there for like over 10 years just so Nuno could come in and just build his own team. And I think over time, he only added, uh, from the team that first arrived on his first day, that he only added one more member of staff across that time. Um, so his medical team were people that he brought with him to the club um, and and have done really, really well. The one thing that I I am cautious to see, though, is if they all join back with him. Uh, Someone that I know told me that there was a chance that they were going to move away and all do their own thing. Uh, But if he's moving into club management again so quickly, it wouldn't surprise me to see him. And obviously, especially to Everton, which isn't a million miles away, it it wouldn't surprise me to see them all stick together because it is a really, really good, good backroom staff. Yeah, and with, with that in mind, I think the reason I was asking so in depth about that is Everton have been really poor in terms of the amount of. I mean, I say poor, whether it's bad luck or not. We always have a lot of injuries. We've never seemed to be able to keep a squad fully fit for years. Uh, and I'm just wondering if a different <laughs> sort of approach from the medical staff might be able to make a difference. If what you're saying is true about Nuno, that could actually be a massive plus for fans. If, yeah. you know, in terms of maybe wanting Nuno to. Come in we had it, we, yeah. We had it, we had issues with it for, for years before. And we had a guy called Tony Daly, which obviously the older fans may have heard of because he was a player that's in the Premier player. League, yeah. Yeah, that's all that's the one, yeah. Yeah, so we had him, and it, it's funny because throughout his career, he was proper like he always had injuries, and then he, he, he went into fitness and stuff and was our fitness coach for like over 10 years. And that's who, one of the people that Wolves moved on. And the boy, and I, I want to say the guy's names are. Antonio Diaz and Zhao Lapa are the two medical guys off the top of my head that I know of. And in the Europa League, basically, we were flying, obviously having the games on the Thursday night. And on the on the evenings of the Thursday, straight after the games, they were flying back to Wolverhampton. So early hours of Friday morning. And they had all this rehab equipment. So on the plane, they were doing rehab 
with all this equipment on the plane. So players were basically like energized by the Friday. So they spent like they they looked into all this equipment and uh, these strategies to basically keep the players at this top condition. Um, maybe that came back to bite us because they look so tired this year. But um, just these techniques and everything, and they've been praised very, very highly because of that. And it'll be interesting to see if it makes it any sort of impact on the Everton squad. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I think that's certainly a massive portal for Everton fans if we were to get him. Uh, we spoke about his relationship with the players. Another big relationship we want I want to ask you about is his connection with George Mendes. Of course, I know... George Mendes has connections himself with Fosun. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to what extent could Nuno sort of use his relationship with George Mendes to the benefit of Everton, just as he sort of did in his spell at Wolves? It'll be interesting because, obviously, we, we've we been using um, or taking advantage of George Mendes ever since Fosun came in, even before Nuno. Um, that was probably one of the biggest reasons we got Nuno. I think, uh, from, if I'm not wrong, Nuno was his first ever client. They're very, very close personally, not just on a footballing level, but on a friendship level. Um, and it was pretty well known that whenever the scouting team at Wolves were offering Nuno options, he would always reject the Wolves options and go with George Mendes' uh, recommendation. And that, I think that wound up a lot of fans towards the end of his time because there were these big players such as Danny Olmo, who plays for Leipzig, uh, Juanqui Chan, I think, who plays for Leipzig as well, were two players that were put forward to Nuno and he said no and we ended up signing a couple of Portuguese guys. So um, that is, it is quite frustrating at times when you look at it that way. However, their, their relationship has been very, very powerful. It wouldn't surprise me to see Nuno use that connection at Everton if he gets the job. Um and I think Fosun are close to Mendes and will continue to use him because Fosun have got have got stakes and shares in Guest Defute, the agency that Mendes owns. So I think look, there's always going to be that connection between Wolves and Mendes there. However, you've seen it before, Jose and Mourinho from club to club has used Mendes before and will continue to use Mendes as a client. And it wouldn't be surprised, like, like I say, Nuno, he's on, so close to him on a personal level. It wouldn't uh, surprise me to see Everton have a look at a couple of his clients. Makes you wonder why you guys haven't got him from Mourinho. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, it would have been interesting if he hadn't got the Roma job so soon. It would have been very interesting to see if he would have come to Wolves this summer. So, um, yeah. It, it, but at the same time, I think Mendes may well have known beforehand what what Fosun were thinking. So, who knows? But yeah, maybe in the future, Mourinho at Wolves is is a possibility. Never know. As long as it doesn't go as badly as Ancelotti at Everton did, then <laughs> we are right. Uh, one last thing on. Um, on Nuno, does he give you players a chance? Because that's something a lot of Everton fans want to see. I know we've seen a couple like Gibbs White and Gilman, you know, yeah. popping through the ranks at Wolves. It, it's an interesting one. He's definitely, uh, this season, we've seen it a little bit more. Players like Owen Ottersau, who, who have been at the club for a long time and doing well in the 23s. Um, Probably not as much as we would hope, but I think Fosin as a and, and, and Wolves as a club have taken quite a strange direction in terms of the academy. It's almost as if we're going through that sort of Man City mentality where they're buying and, and handpicking talents from abroad or from lower English clubs and using them in the 23s to sell on for profit. So it's not like we've been using them our 23 system as a sort of conveyor belt to get young players into the team. I'm not going to say he hasn't done that because our squad overall is very, very young. But if I'm honest, a large proportion of them are players that the club have signed and brought in themselves. Um, but like you say, Morgan Gibbs White has had much more of an opportunity under Nuno. Max Kilman, although he wasn't directly a youth prospect uh, product at the club, he was in the 23s and it's someone Nuno bought into the first team because he liked him. So I'm not going to say he's fully against the youth policy and then youth players because you look at the average age of our squad and I think he manages youth players very, very well. But I just don't think, I'd, I'd probably say Everton's 23s may well be much stronger than uh, than uh, the Wolves system at the moment. So we it wouldn't surprise me to see him bring a couple of those players through, to be honest. And finally, just on, on sort of in general with Nuno, what are his strengths and weaknesses as a manager? Ooh, good question. Um... Weaknesses or strength, you could put this as is as either really is stubbornness. I would say, uh, like I said earlier, always likes a set eleven or set squad, um, and always got an idea in his mind, whether that be good or bad. Obviously, when things start to go pear shaped, you'd hope he has a plan B. But at times, 
especially over the last couple of years, it looks like that hasn't been the case and his stubbornness has been his own downfall. Um, defensively, I think he's good. He likes to set, uh, if, you know, if you, if you need to grind out a result, nine times out of 10, he'll get you that result. Uh, weaknesses probably being forward thinking in terms like an attacking coach. Um, I think, you know, if Everton ever go 1-0 or 2-0 up, you may well see them start to sit back straight away. Even at, say, 1-0 or 2-0 up at half-time of a game, it wouldn't surprise me to see you start parking the bus just to defend that lead, really. He's a little bit like Mourinho in terms of his coaching style and, and so on. And I think we, we all know a lot more about how Mourinho plays. And I think Nuno is almost a carbon copy of that in, in some aspects of his management game. So I think you can expect that. But like I said earlier, it wouldn't surprise me if Nuno gets the Everton job to sort of completely switch his mindset and go with this attacking, possession-based, forward-thinking game that he, he, he teased at Wolves, but just didn't quite have the squad or players to achieve, I don't think. I'm not too sure he's had the squad or players to do that here, to be honest. It's a bigger <laughs> squad, but it's not necessarily a better one, I don't think. Yeah, I think on paper that the, the squads are probably very, very even. I think um, defensively, you guys have probably got a better back four to try the 4 2 3 one that Wolves wanted to see. I think... Someone like Digne would be good down that left-hand side. I think, you know, the, the centre-backs that you've currently got there will suit it quite well. So, I, I, I would be intrigued. I think if, if if you put our two squads next to each other this season and said which one's going to work better with a 4-2-3-1 or, or similar system, I think I, I would have probably still picked Everton's. Yeah, probably, yeah. But um, in that respect, as you think personnel-wise, you've probably got a bit, of, a bit of an edge on us, to be honest, in terms of the quality you've got. It's just yeah. not find someone to harness it. Yeah, I think he was unlucky with the Jimenez injury as well, which we spoke about earlier. I think, you know, we could have had much more luck this season if we had Jimenez in the squad. We missed his goals and so on. And yeah, but, but I've, you know, there's definitely qualities in there. Um, it's one of those, I think, in terms of managers at the moment for clubs like Everton, Wolves, if Villa ever, you know, needed a manager. I think there's such a vast difference in the quality of managers. You've got your Contes, you've got your Zidans and stuff that are available, but they're going to be looking at your Champions League clubs. And I think for the clubs like Everton and Wolves that, want European football but aren't quite there it's quite a step down in terms of management and I don't think there's any real exciting options out there at the moment uh, I want after, especially after the way Ancelotti's treated us in the last couple of days I think the next manager we take needs to be coming in and the same probably goes for you guys and Aston Villa as well like if any of those sort of teams whoever comes in needs to treat the management of the club as a privilege yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah, it, it was as if Ancelotti was doing Everton a favour, I think, especially towards the end there, with the way some of the stuff that he said, it was as if, you know, Everton weren't, yeah, like I said, he, like he was doing you lot a favour, which isn't quite the case. Like you say, you, you, the, he, well, he was doing an such a favour in the small manner of it, 11 million a year. So, yeah, exa exactly. Yeah, yeah. And with, some of the, with the money he was on, it was, it was absolutely ridiculous. So, yeah, I think you guys, especially, you know, you're such a big club. I think you do need someone that's going to treat Everton with 100% respect and uh, hopefully 100% passion. Nuno could be that guy. Um, I've got a lot of time for him. And I was one of the fans that was pretty shocked and sad to see him go. Um, but I think, you know, it was time for both parties to go in different directions. And finally, Nuno or not, if you were in Everton's position, who would you who do you think should be the Everton manager? It's, it's difficult. I think you've got a guy there with three years Premier League experience, so he knows he more or less knows the league. Um, like like when we spoke before, I think the only other guy that I, I, I'm surprised I haven't seen linked with Everton more is probably Paolo Fonseca, who just left the Roma job. Um, but again, neither of them would. You know, neither of them get you off your seat, I don't think. So, I think Nuno's a safe bet for Everton. You know, he's not going to send you down. But at the same time, is he going to be the man to, to to get you into that top six, which I think Everton, especially this season, fought and probably, you know, still think they should have been capable of with the with the running that you had towards the start of the season. So, it'll, it'll be intriguing. But Nuno's a safe bet, I think, for Everton. Probably not the most exciting option, but definitely a safe bet. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Uh... Whether whether the fans are bothered about getting excited, I don't think many fans even anything would really excite them at the moment. The <laughs> Everton fan base is generally depressed beyond belief at the moment. <laughs> uh, so you know, e e even the most outlandish announcement will, you know, it'll say something pretty insane to lift them. But we'll have to wait and see. And who knows if Nuno was the man? We'll see what he can do. But thank you for joining me on the show, Dave. It's been great chatting to you, and uh, best of luck for next season with it, Bruno Lager. 
Yeah, Bruno. I still don't know how to say it. Bruno Lage, maybe. I, I don't know Bruno, how to say it. But yeah, they, Bruno, Bruno Lage. Yeah, yeah. Everyone was calling him, call him the pint. Our, yeah, yeah, we can we can keep all our Nuno chance and just change it to Bruno now. So we're we're all right to be fair. There you but, go. Uh, yeah, easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's when you have Portuguese continuity. That yeah, that that's the only positive. But yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, he's a very attacking minded coach, not very experienced. So again, some fans underwhelmed. Probably a bit like the Everton fan base with uh, with a couple of the names that have been touted about. But yeah, looking forward to it, mate. And obviously, best of luck to Everton as well for next season. Yeah, same for you, mate. Uh, let's just see what happens for both clubs. Uh roll on next season or maybe not I don't know um, <laughs> thank you for joining me Dave and of course you guys at home thank you for tuning in on the Toppy Blues uh, subscribe for more content as we you know bring you more updates on the managerial fund we'll see what happens next uh, give this video a like and of course drop us your comments let us know who you think should be the new Everton manager let us know what you think about Nuno and also uh, drop some comments about Wolves as well let us know what you think about Wolves' new manager and you know could Nuno make the transition to Everton and do a decent job here? Let us know your opinions. Like I say, subscribe and drop us a like. And until next time, guys, thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you later. Everton!